Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Chris and today I'm just doing a brief compilation of some uh, bits and pieces about the Avro Lancaster really as a tribute more to the crew than uh, the aircraft itself. Uh, we've got quite a selection. Uh, we've got some uh, an interview with uh, Keith Dunning. His father was flight engineer Guy Dunning about his time in Lancaster. A flight out over the Niagara Falls in the uh, Canadian warplane heritage uh, Avro Lancaster, which I think you'll find quite quite spectacular. Got an interview with Wing Commander Oliver Wells of Seven Squadron, who was a Lancaster pilot, and he was shot down on the 30th of August 1943. And also we've got some um, bits and pieces from squadron leader Charles Patterson about his service at, uh, at the Air Force Base, the RAF Base during World War II. So uh, hold tight and hope you enjoy it. Keith, you can't help but be impressed by this mighty machine. Well, at the time, it was the largest bomber capable of lifting the 22,000 pounds in weight. Mm. It far outdid anything the Americans had. Um, a bit crude in places, but very efficient. Yeah. Designed for dropping bombs. That was it, totally. Nothing else but. How were they revered by the people who flew them? They loved them. Um, apart from on takeoff, where because of the large tail fin at the back, they tended to go sideways. Um, but you had to, you had to counteract that with the rudder stick, you know, fully over. Every mission those airmen went on, though, they knew that they may not return. They all knew that. They were sitting on 15, 20,000 pounds worth of high explosive and 21,000 litres of high-octane petrol. You can imagine, can't you, they, they get the call, there's a mission on, they scramble for the aircraft. And they're a tight unit of men, aren't they? Yes, they're, they're all, although most of them never made they were companions, but they tried not to make personal friends because so many of them died. That was a we were briefed going fairly late on. It was the first time we were dropping our own target markers as, as a pathfinder. And we were briefed to go in, I think, at about 20, 20 minutes past the HR. And uh, it's a very short flight, actually, only about two hours each way from the Cambridge area to edge of the road. And we thought this was going to be a pretty easy one, really, there and back, four hours. <laughs> we just set it up to, when you, when you um, get near the target, which we could see very clearly, it's a well, burning well, you know. When you get near the target, you've got to fly straight and level. Normally, you'd, over enemy territory, you'd corkscrew it slightly all the time, making it more difficult for night fighters to get a bead on you. But as you, as you approach the target, the bomb movement requires you to go absolutely straight and level so you can get his, his um, bomb sight on the target. And now that's the stage where the night fighters came up underneath where you couldn't see them unless you had them. They, they, by that time they realised it was a bad idea to shoot the, uh, straight at their fuselage because the bombs would probably go off and get them too. So they shot into the, one of the wings of the aircraft to set the petrol tanks on fire. And this is what happened to us, simple as that. <laughs> that at that stage, which was actually, the price was changed later, but at that stage we were told to, to dive to try and blow out the fire with the uh, pressure of the, the slipstream. That really, I think, only made it worse, actually. <laughs> and it didn't take very long, probably a minute or two, to, to realise that we weren't going to get this far out. So we decided we'd have to. I abandoned the aircraft and I told the bomb over to jettison the bombs, which he did, and then told them all to get out. I, I held on as long as I could, because it takes a bit of time for the mid upper gunner and people like that to clear the, down the fuselage and out of the door. And the bomb over, uh, Ed, flight engineer, while I saw it, went out of the left, bottom of the the bottom of the hatch in the nose of the aircraft. Well, then I realised <coughs> that I must have had long enough. And at that stage, there was an explosion in the back of the aircraft. I think it was probably the flare, which probably blew, blew out 
part of the tail, I think. And I lost control completely. So I, I made a dash for the front escape hatch. You were taught to dive out. And I, I made a dive through it. By, the, by um, earlier on, though, by then it had passed me my parachute to fasten on the front. And I got somehow caught up in that. I think it was because of the, by that time the aircraft had gone into a spin and the sideways force of the air flung me against the side of the escape hatch. And the harness was caught into something that I couldn't get back in and I couldn't get out, <laughs> head down. <laughs> so eventually I decided I was probably going to be killed, but I made an effort to um, undo the harness, hopefully hanging onto it and jump out, you know, clutching it and pulling a ripcord. It was pretty, pretty forlorn hope, but uh, that was all the only thing I could think of to do. And uh, next thing I knew, I was on the ground, face down on the earth, wondering why I was still, still alive. I was without the parachute, without my flying boots, just my May my, my, my West, uh, you know, the flotation thing, right. still on me. So from, from actually leaving the aircraft to hitting the ground, you don't know how you got there, really? No, no idea. It was, uh, I can only assume it went in on, in on a floor, they call it a flat spring. The wing, wing tip must have hit, hit the ground first and sort of flung, flung me out in some way. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed the, uh, the brief fly around in the Lancaster, the Avro Lancaster. 
it's been quite an enjoyable journey, uh, quite an emotional journey in many ways, and I uh, hope you join me on the next film, and please have a think about subscribing, and I uh, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Take care, all the very best, cheerio!